Okay, thanks everyone for coming today. Um, it's a very nice turn up. So I um, also like to thank the University of the Third Age for organizing a group. They actually came in the bus. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for your support. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay respect to the elders both past and present. Um, today we have um, a talk with um, Tina McCarthy. So we're going to find out everything about Tina today. Um, and you're welcome to ask questions towards the end. So um, we, we, we do have time for a bit of Q&A. And also towards the end, we're going to get Tina to read her poetry. Um, so Tina is multi-talented. Um, she's a painter, she's an installation and performance artist, um, but she also um, writes poetry. So um, a brief introduction. Um, Tina McCarthy um, is born in Perth and um, she has uh, Italian heritage as well as uh, Aboriginal heritage and her, her family is from the stolen generation so uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about Tina um, Tina is from the Barkindji country on the Aboriginal side and um, Mount Como, yes. Uh, Lake Como. Oh, Lake Como, yeah, okay. Yeah, Lake Como um, in Italy. Um, and, uh, and um, yeah, but she's born in Perth. So, Tina, um, obviously, when you grow up, I presume that at the time you would be known more for your Italian heritage. Is that correct? Yes. So, tell us a little bit more about your early days, you know, um, as you grew up in Perth. <clears throat> uh, very much I was grown up um, into an Italian family. Um, we, at the time, were not allowed to know we're Aboriginal. Um, in fact, it was the last thing you wanted to be back then. Uh, so many people, I think, didn't identify for that reason. Um, I think there's still a few like that. Um, but uh, it was something I always knew that I had. I had something else, and I knew that it was possibly Aboriginal blood. Um, I loved my nana on my father's side, who was clearly an Aboriginal woman, but I just saw her as nana. I didn't think of her as black or white or, you know, half Irish and Aboriginal. Um, and so I used to see her every week. I was really close to her. Um, my Italian side, I would go every second or third week, and. Um, stomp on grapes, make wine, look at the salami, <laughs> be frightened of Nonna because she was all big and black and scary and didn't like children. So I generally used to wait in the car and hide uh, from Nonna. And so I had her as fat Nana and uh, my Aboriginal Nana, thin Nana. But I really loved my thin Nana and very much based most of my work around Nana, thin Nana and her Barkindji story, which is, as we know, in that area, which is Broken Hill, where she's from. Um, Menindi Lakes is the place. And sadly, we've had all the fish kills and the dying of the river, which is something I've been painting about and writing about for a long time. Some of the paintings at the back there, uh, which I call Blood on the Rocks, are actually the rocks of the Darling River where I went and I lied in the river myself and I just did selfies of the rocks all around me um, and then I painted over them. Um, that is about the massacres that went on as Mitchell travelled down, uh, as he discovered the Darling, there were many massacres. So I've got a lot of, a lot of stuff to talk about in my art, um, both sides of my family really, yeah. So Tina, at what age or what stage of your life did you start engaging with your Aboriginality? It was really strange because going to Nana's all the time, like I said, I didn't see her as a coloured woman, but she clearly was. And I grew up not being allowed to know about it, but I felt it 
Like I could feel it in my blood. I could feel it in my spirit. Things happened to me. It didn't happen to other people that were unusual and strange. And, you know, I'd be like, where does that come from? Um, and that might be that I would see things or feel things that other people didn't feel. Um, so I really started putting together a file of information because I was determined to find out what this other thing was that we had going on, that I had going on. Um, so around my 20s, I started to put these pieces together. Um, my 30s is about the time where I went, right, I'm going to find this. And, uh, and I did. Yeah. And at what age did you decide that I'm going to be an artist? <laughs> Believe it or not, <clears throat> mum being of the Italian Renaissance um, thing, um, I was seven years old when I decided. I told mum I was going to be a poet and a painter one day, and she said, oh, no, no, you're going to be a tradie, you know. I'm going to get a trade. Look, God bless her. Um, I'm really glad she made me be a hairdresser. Um, and I did that for 35 years. Um, and I also did makeup with that. I first worked in salons. I made my way from Perth to Sydney to work in top salons. I was determined to do fashion mags, which I ended up doing. Um, so I was very involved in the fashion industry. And then I got into the film industry. And then I got into the television industry. So I was able to, my trade, was what kept me going, obviously, to afford to live and everything else. But yeah, at a very young age, Mum gave me all paints and went, you know, just paint. And I used to run away from everybody up into the woodshed and set up a little studio where I'd just find my own little peaceful place amongst all the, the madness that was going on at the time. Yeah. And, and, and paint and write poetry up there. So it's, um, it's really great for me now, at this age, I'm not saying how old I am, but fairly old, um, that now, you know, I can actually write poetry and it's starting to be published and um, now with this fantastic gallery that I'm able to show my work with. Yeah. So Tina, you came to Sydney. Obviously, along the way, sort of, you stop off at various places, including uh, Alice Spring. I believe you were working in Alice Spring at one stage as well. And then um, you decided to do your degree at Kofa. So maybe tell us a little bit more about that part of your life. I was still hairdressing um, when, after applying to a place called Link Up, there's a place called Link Up, and if you think you have Aboriginal blood and can prove it, you go through them, and they then, therefore, thus send you an officer who interviews you, and you go through all these processes to sort of prove your Aboriginality, if you like. Um, so that that uh, getting involved in Link Up was um, really changed my life. Uh, when I got the certificate of Aboriginality in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> That really changed my life. Um, <laughs> I got on my bike promptly and um, rode to the nearest art gallery. And although I was hairdressing at the time, I just was so proud and excited to finally be able to say what I thought I'd always been, which was also an Aboriginal woman. Um, I was very lucky. I was recommended to SCA. I got in just on interview without any education at all. Just they liked my paintings, and um, and then I went to Kofu and was headhunted by them. So I ended up doing my degree there, and so I got in through a specialist program at Kofu, um, which was a special access scheme for people like me who didn't have an education, um, but had obviously had you know, something that, um, you know, I could give, yeah. This exhibition is called um, Moments in Life. So I suppose the idea of the exhibition is that, I mean, for instance, for me, I don't write a diary or a journal about my life. 
but I tend to remember things based on what I collect at the time. I'm a bit of a collector. It's, I think it's in my genes. So um, I used to collect everything. So at one stage, um, especially in the 60s, 70s and 80s, I used to buy a lot of music albums. You know, this is before CD come out. And um, so I remember my life through the, the music albums that I buy. You know, every time I play a, a, an album, I would remember, okay, that's 10 years ago, and I remember what I was doing back then. So that's my journal or diary in a way. So this exhibition is called Moments in Life. Like, you know, I, I think all our memories is, you know, like, um, you know, built up over the years, and it's sort of related to different events. And so for artists, I thought, Usually they do a different series of work as they go through, as they develop their, their career. And a lot of times each series of work relates to a particular stage in their life, which you know inspired them to do that particular series of work. Um, so Tina did this series of work, so maybe you can just tell us a little bit more about the inspiration behind this series of work. <laughs> 